What is up, everybody? Happy New Year! How's your new year going? Are you good? Oh man, look how tiny that chat is. Ho oh, ho ho, let's fix that right off the bat. I need you to be able to talk to each other. Oh my gosh, what a day, you guys. What a freaking day. This has been a great day, you guys. Um, let me fix that chat, sorry about it. Ah uh, man, I changed a few settings, thought it might be cool to change a couple things, but you know, we should never do that, so. What's up, man? Chat is popping. How are y'all doing tonight? Happy New Year. Let's increase that font size just a little bit. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's browser settings. Let's get this this chat. Oop. Ah, oh, that's a little closer. A little bit more than that. How about... Oh, there it is. Oh, man, we are so good. New year, new stream, baby. New year, new stream. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, oh, my gosh, we got so many cool people in here. What's up? We've got Esper. How you doing, lady? Experiment, how are you? My favorite, Nam Red Eye Piss. <laughs> Spider-Man backwards, but I'll never live that down. Sid, what's up? Good to see you, King Valvados. Oh my gosh, Orange Lavender. So many cool friends. Racy May, Zach Dixon. Oh my gosh, Subtext. How are you doing, you guys? I am just feeling so good tonight. I'm feeling so good. Um, I, sub uh, in the chat. You can you can attest to this. There is nothing quite like when you um, publish some of your content like publish your new video and stuff so today i published uh, my first final fantasy 7 remake video i've never done content on 7 remake um before but today uh, i i've been working um over my holiday break i was like you know what it's not every day that final fantasy 7 um is is released and we've got the sequel coming up at the end of february so i was like i've got to put out some some seven stuff or else i'm gonna lose this moment you know like there's questions that need to be answered um, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and uh, this is the time to get those questions out of my system and, and stuff so um, I, uh, I I throw out this video today and you, you know you just never know how it's gonna hit right like it's so terrifying I know that I had a great time making it it was so fun um, a lot of sleepless nights <laughs> but um you know, when you publish it, you press that button and it's like, holy smokes, um, is it gonna, is it gonna hit? And, uh, then like people just picked up on it and y'all have been so kind in the comments over on YouTube and on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So thank you for supporting that first video. And what I can tell you, um, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'll let you in on a little secret because you're here tonight. Um, I have three of these mini lecture videos planned, okay? And each one is going to kind of follow that, uh, that same flow. But if you want to know a secret, I've only, I've only publicized three of those videos because there's a real possibility that that third one is going to turn into a fourth one. But I didn't want to like shout that out into the, the void too early, but like I think that that third episode is going to be a little supersized and I may need to split it into two. So anyway, it's, it's going to be a big one. We've got some amazing things. Yeah, I told, so I told you about those videos, but um, I, I kind of posted today that I had three videos, but I'm, I'm holding back on one. You're going to get all the content, but I think it's going to be four instead of three, but we're going to see. We're going to see. Part of that depends on my like, real life job. So eh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, everybody, I just got to say thank you. Um, and if you haven't seen the, the video, then I hope you'll go check it out. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, y'all, it's been, it's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. So thank you for getting in here tonight. Uh, we are going to do our first ever lecture play of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, a little bit of history between me and Final Fantasy VII. Um, I was 14 years old, or excuse me, I got Final Fantasy VII 
for my 14th birthday. Um, I had just gotten um, a Nintendo 64 for my 13th birthday, so I did not want to even ask for a PlayStation uh, because I was like, my parents, like, I don't, I don't want to like put a strain on them. So, I w but they saw how I lit up whenever I saw the commercials for it because my birthday's in October. They, um, they, they, the game came out in September in the states for me. But um, on, I remember one particular night. We were watching Friday Night Blitz, which was the high school football wrap-up and stuff. And um, and uh, the commercial for Final Fantasy VII uh, came on. And I, like, kind of couldn't contain myself. I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And my parents noticed it. And they were like, is that a new Final Fantasy game? Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's the seventh one. And they were like, you don't have that one. And I was like, no, it comes out, it, it, it's literally coming out right now. And it's on PlayStation. And uh, so, wouldn't you know it, like, I, I didn't ask for a PlayStation or anything like that, but they surprised me for my birthday with that. And you guys, um, Final Fantasy VII and I go back all the way to 1997. I played that game a minimum of one time a year for the last, um, what yes, is that, um, 30, 26 years, something like that. So I, I played it at least once a year ever since then. Hey, thank you for the follow, Nate Gray, 817. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ah, oh, they were great. They were absolutely great. So, um, anyway, it was a huge surprise, and I love this game. This game, if you are new, how many of you are new to the Final Fantasy VII franchise? I know we've got a lot of, like, lore casters in here. How many of you are like, I'm new? Like, I don't know Final Fantasy VII. I bet Racy is. Um, some of you have probably played it maybe once or something like that. Um, I, I think... Uh, I think I know Nimredipus uh, does. I don't know why I don't call you Spider-Man, but uh, it's what I know, yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's awesome. Awesome, able to uh, get it out of a pawn shop. Yeah, uh, uh, able to get it pretty soon after it came out. Okay, that's awesome. Um, oh, man, that's great. Uh, sorry, I'm catching up a little bit on chat. Um, yeah. We'll talk more about the video, and we're definitely going to dive into a few things with that video, and it's going to give us a, a context for this game. But the reason why I've played this game so many times, chat, is um, there, there are themes of life and death and um, hope that are just unparalleled. And especially at the time when this game came out, it was absolutely stunning for me. Um, and I remember it hit me um, in, in a way that I just wasn't prepared for. It, it um, is a story about identity in some ways. It's a coming-of-age story. Um, it, it, it's just a powerful story. It means a lot to me. So I'm excited to share this experience with you. I haven't played Remake in about a year. So um, that's it. We are going to be playing on hard mode, everybody. Um, so uh, get excited for that. And I believe that in order to do that, I have to go to chapter select. Is that a thing? No, I have to load the game and then I have to go into that, I believe. Yeah. So um, yeah, this happens in chapter 17, but we're going to pause real quick and do chapter select. So just get excited for that. Um, there's some of our characters. Chapter selection, we're gonna go all the way to the beginning, the destruction of Mako Reactor 1. Let's go. Hard mode, you ready for this? I'm gonna swap the screen real quick. Potions, potions, uh, no items, I believe in this playthrough, right? Yeah, let's do it. I need to restart the chapter, okay, yeah, that's, that's the idea. Let's do this.
Yeah, no items. This is such a great opening, right? Ah, oh, it's so good. Ah, oh, I see that you're starting the taunting. Good. The Newsboys aesthetic. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Why are you saying I'm gonna die? Come on now. There's our girl. Guys, real quick, is there a crackle on your end? I'm hearing a little bit of a crackle, and I want to get that fixed. If there's not, it's just on my end. There he is. Okay. I'm going to fix that once we get into play mode. Okay, I'll get that fixed. God, uh, there's a bad crackle, yeah. Yeah, I'll get it. A little audio hiccup, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cutting out. Let, let me see if I can fix that real quick for us, okay? Oh, I know what's happening here. Sorry about it. Let me just stop real quick. We're going to go into menu for just a second so that I can sort some of this out. Okay. Are you hearing the crackle now? What if Mr. T was a terrorist? <laughs> ah, okay, an eco-terrorist. No crackle? Okay. Let me know if you hear it again. We're gonna try to, to fix that if we can, so. Yeah. Sorry about that, yeah. You just had the cutting in out. The skipping is gone on your end. Okay, good. Maybe we fixed it. I don't know. Hard to say. 
We are getting a little bit of craziness with this scene over here, though, so... Let me swap out that chat box, because that's going to drive me up the wall. It's because we've got this new layout, so we're just going to do this real, real super quick. Again, remember, you came for professional, not this. So that's where we are. Professional, not this, right now. Boom. There's that, and now we have a chat box that is gigantic, but we don't need that. Um, hey, thank you for the sub, Sakura. Let's go, 400. There we go, that may do. Okay, that's kind of gigantic, but it'll do, right? Thanks for bearing with me, you guys. I just want it to be so perfect for you. That's what I want, chat. I want you to love this game like I love it. Okay. Okay, let's get back to it. Ready? Uh, real talk, I see uh, some of you have taken off from work for, uh, for a remake. <laughs> I too have. <laughs> I literally canceled classes that week. All right, let's do it. Halt! Who goes there? You're up. You're coming with us. Nice and easy. Don't think so. It's not bad. I am literally trying to play this like 16, and I cannot do that. Woo! Everybody notice those bad guys evaporated into green. Who in the hell? Hands where I can see them. Yeah, I'm telling telling them to do a project that week. Freeze! Move and we shoot. Go ahead. Uh, no. Enough of this. Okay, why not? Oh, there's my commands. Okay. Huh. Drop the weapon. You got this. Yeah, there's what he said. Charlie Sheen over there. If you're new to this game, you probably have not seen the Charlie Sheen memes. But, um... Not bad. Just looking around. The character Biggs looks just like Charlie Sheen from, uh, what was that movie? What is it? Platoon? I can't remember. One thing that I will never get over is how you can't use items in um, in um, hard mode, but they continually give you items. <laughs> hey, Lady of the Rings. Feel bad for the students that... <laughs> so what's Charlie Soldier Boy's deal? Wolverine. Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this... Uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> that you can't use. I love this is a one -time Wedge. Gig. When it's done, we're done. Mm. Uh, 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 joy to work with. Uh, we all joy to work I with love these characters so much. Right, Here we go. Looks are what people notice first. Do you agree with that, chat? Looks are what people notice first? I'd say you're not even reading the same book. And now, uh, oh, we're done here. They've almost got we're the door. The same. Give it a rest. We're doing this. We're really doing it. Man, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Shinra Construction. What we do for Midgar, we do for you. 
you name right after <laughs> That was one of my best moments. Cloud's full name. Nobody do something this crazy just for money. They may not think you're a true believer, but you know what I think? Not interested. What? Uh, An actual absolute lunatic, Zach. You're right. Which? Uh, <sighs> you better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. Hmm. Yeah, I want to say that I noticed personality first, but sometimes I guess you gotta like be around somebody for a minute. Ho ho! Look at that scene. Get him, boy! Time to get serious. The combat is just so good in this! Oh, I love it! Was never in doubt. In, uh, in hard mode, you've really got to look for boxes. Because there may be, like, little shards that'll replenish stuff for you. Like that guy. Chocobo butt hair. Yeah, they do. Which is a joke in Rebirth from the trailers. You notice that they have a massive sword? <laughs> Oh my gosh. What's up, guys? Okay. I'll go last, no worries. This way. Was there anything over here? Oh, wait. I remember now. Huh. Not so fast. We've got company. We've got company. Hey, thanks for the sub, G-Boy Gaming. If I'm saying that right. This will be quick. This will be quick. Let's get him, baby. Let's do this. I love that triple slash, in case you can't tell. Nothing to it. Whew, it's my favorite. music so hype what's up couch potato welcome welcome Let's try some other moves while we're at it pretty nice oh, inventory full hmm I do, I do. We're playing on hard mode some, dude. Oh, whoops. I'll get to the thesis in just a minute. Yeah, that's a great question, Lady of the Rings. Thematically totally different. Totally different, Mr. Matt. Um. Soldiers may attack on command, but I hear they make good guard dogs too. Bet you've seen a few reactors. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako storage? <sighs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Mm -hmm. Or is he a loyal little doggy? <clears throat> Have it your way, mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. Hmm. Alright everybody, let's meet the crew here. Um, so just outside there, yeah, I don't know if you can still see him. Yeah, there he is down there. That is Wedge. Uh, he's the bigger guy. Um, 
he is um, a member of a group called Avalanche, and these uh, other three are kind of leaders of that, kind of giving some framework for this. Uh, we're going to get to know them a little bit more. Jesse and Biggs over here, a.k.a. Charlie Sheen, but the big guy um, to pay attention to for now is Barrett. Um, so uh, if you've played this game before, you know that this game starts out let me chat for a second. You know this game starts out with a raid on a Mako reactor. Mako is like the lifeblood of the planet, um, right? Hence the aesthetic uh, that we've got here. Um, these are all like uh, green Mako live stream-esque sort of uh, images um, all, all around uh, the stream tonight. But the question that, that was posed in 1997 is still being uh, asked here, and kind of our thesis for the night is a question not of theology necessarily, but a question of ethics. But I think that there is a, a larger uh, question in this game of how far will you go to do what is right, to ensure that people have a future? And I think that's a great ethical question. Will you do something that is morally in a gray area in order for a greater good? That's what we're seeing here. It's shocking for a lot of people to realize that Cloud, Barrett, and all this group, they are a group of eco-terrorists. They are targeting Mako reactors, which is the lifeblood of the planet. Um, a, a, a company named Shinra is processing the, uh, um, the energy, the lifeblood of the planet, to make energy, to make power. And so um, this group is uh, kind of environmentally conscious, uh, at least at this point in the game. And so the question is, what do you do with that? Their solution here is we're going to take down the Mako reactor and we're going to set a bomb <laughs> in the Mako reactor. So it's kind of a weird sort of moment of like, uh, am I, is, what a, is what I am doing right now right? And that's a, that's a great question. So as we go through this, I want you to think in terms of these two things. Number one, um, the morality of the characters at hand. Number two, I want you to think in terms of um, how far... Uh, would someone be willing to go in order to do what is right? Uh, this game is going to deal with that question in a lot of ways, especially when we meet some of the characters kind of mid-game. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go into it. Now, we're certainly going to get into predestination, uh, the stuff from my video um, earlier today. Uh, we're going to get into that as well, um, but we're really going to dive into that stuff in some later uh, lectures. Tonight, though, we're introducing ourselves to the world. Um, as we go along, I would encourage you, what questions do you have about this game? What do you notice? Especially, we are, we're kind of a theology class, right? What theology do you see here? What, uh, what um, modern philosophy or um, morality do you see at work here? And uh, how does it sit in 2023 or 2024 now versus those of you old enough, uh, how it fit in in 1997? With that, let's continue. Watching you. Likewise, Barrett. Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door open soon. Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door open soon. In three, two. Damn, I'm good. Who's there? Door! Oh, wait! Here we go. Add time. Oh, no. It's over. It's That's over. my line. We can take it. Make it rain. Mm. I love this song so much. We're back. Then let's move. Hey, you guys. Kaylee knows just what to say. Cut it out. Simmer down, hot shot. Simmer down, hot shot. It's a good thing I know someone who can get us the passcodes. <sighs> Pity no one else at command will talk to us, but what can you do? Hmm. And we're good. Careful in there. Hmm. He's alone with cover. Thank you, Biggs. Let's look for boxes. Not those boxes. Okay. Ooh, treasure. Security is only going to get tighter, so be ready. We can't afford any more mistakes. Just from an artistic like standpoint, the on another floor. This, pushing that button? this game's storytelling uh, and presentation is just like unparalleled. It's so, so good. 
So, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? Jesse. Cloud! <laughs> Are you ignoring me? Tifa. <laughs> Little Tifa. Tifa and I. <sighs> well, I've got 50 elixirs that I can't use because it's hard mode, so I can give them to her. <laughs> I knew Cody Christian from um, All American, uh, the football high school show, high school football show. Great show, by the way. He's a perfect cloud. Oh, man. I love him. These sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Anybody familiar with Heidegger, the philosopher? Rest assured. Our inquiries will not take much longer. <laughs> Next week we're gonna this talk a little bit about Heidegger. This is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you sit, it's here sucking up Marco. It doesn't rest and it doesn't care. You do realize what Marco is, don't you? Marco <sighs> is the lifeblood of our world. The planet <laughs> bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? Mm. I know you can! Just you really hear that? Deadpan. I love Cloud. Damn straight I do. Get help. <laughs> Get help! <laughs> Say that again! Hey MJ, what's up, brother? I'd worry less about the planet. It's late where you are, bro. The next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Thanks for hopping in, man. I hope you have a great, happy New Year, brother. Our lives are on the line now. So, that's what you I've been saying. Listening, Merc. One false move. Ooh. And that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some places a sword just can't reach. Hmm. <laughs> the legend himself. That's right. Everybody, if you don't know MJ don't Gallagher, he has written you? the literal books on Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> uh, Norse myths that inspired Final Fantasy VII Should and Greek myths money. that inspired Final Fantasy VII. Uh, he and I recently did a, um, a lecture... Uh, co-lecture conversation about Final Fantasy 16. Go check out his stuff. Um, so, uh, MJ, you, you're too kind. You humble me. Thanks for hopping in, bro. All right, let's see what Barrett can do, baby. Gonna throw your sword at him. Let the man with the gun go to work. These ten cans ain't got nothing on me. Okay, let's do this. There we go. Man, I am forgetting how to play this game. <laughs> I just really want to play it like Final Fantasy 16, don't I? Bring it home. Do your job, I'm working on it. Shut up and move over. Man, I freaking love Cody. That was nothing. Hey, what's up, Jet? How you doing? Yeah, Sub, uh, you, you mentioned it earlier. Cody's performance in this game is masterclass. Um, and the way that he's able to give these nuanced inflections, especially in Crisis Core, is just amazing. Now, there, is, there, there are um, times in the demo and maybe some of the trailers when he's going to play a younger Cloud um, in the, the upcoming sequel. And I think that is going to be, like, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, so we're, we're real excited about that one. Look what we have here. A laser security system. Those things will hurt more than your pride if you're careless. Hoping thanks for the sub, right? down to size and then some. But I'm guessing you've done this kind of thing before. Yeah. Figure out the timing of the lasers. Then, make a move when they cycle off. Exactly. I'll go first. Nothing like a little danger to get the blood pumping. Mm. Hey! 
Just keep those baby blues of yours on me. You got it. Okay, I'm so bad at this. But we're gonna wait. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, oh not yet, not yet. Professional Noctis right here. I know, Jesse. Okay. This one's tricky. Boom. Okay. Is it tricky? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that was not as tricky. I thought it did like a, a three count sort of thing. John Bentley is incredi incredible. Let's take bets if he hits a laser, brother. Oh, this is the three, yeah. So we're gonna wait. One, two, three. And now I go. Yeah. Oh, God dang it. Ah, Esper, you, <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> ah. <laughs> No, dang it! Oh! No, again. Okay, well, we made it. We got through. It's like, it's like I always say. <laughs> no pain, no gain. That's right, I coined that phrase. <sighs> oh, it smokes. Well, Me too, Jesse. They don't call those things sweepers for nothing. They can wipe out a whole squad in seconds. <laughs> you think you get the timing down, but no. Oh my goodness. Uh, can I, let me just take a second. I need to look at some of my things. So we've got Cure, Cura, and I have zero other materia. Do I have anything? Yeah, let's just take a look gander at everything at this point. That's not right. Okay. Can I look at my... Okay, we like the prayer materia. R1 circle did it activate, got it. Time materia. Let's see. Trademark professional knocked us. Hey listen, it's a good name. It's a good name. When it when it works. Otherwise it just doesn't. Do I already have lightning materia? No. Okay, we do now. All right, let's go. Uh, we can take this off the jump. Our post of junk is a heavy weapons platform. If we rush in, our jerk, we die. Is that right? We need to hit it with magic. That should give us an opening. Yes, we do. Thunder. Yeah. Of course. It just had to get back up. So we knock it down again. No again, time again, baby. Oh no! Oh, circle is how you dodge. <laughs> Y'all, Final Fantasy 16 has broken my brain. <laughs> as far as playing this one. Oh boy. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Streamlabs is going off in the chat. Sorry about that. To the PS5 power button. You tricked me.
That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Let's get down there. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Y'all, can I tell you, the first time that I played through this game and got to this part, like, it's like everything from my childhood was coming alive. Um, if you've never seen, um, I guess I'm specifically talking to you, Racy. Um, if you've never seen the original, this is just like light years beyond what that one looked like. Um, the, that, that one's charming, don't get me wrong, but this is just a realization of... Those incredible things. So. Scared, huh? <laughs> More like excited. I've been dreaming about oh, you have Racy. Whoa, thank you for the follow. Official Jedi. Oh, gotta grab those. Okay, I think we're good there. Oh, wait, no, no, we gotta talk to Jesse. Sorry, Barrett. Um, so here's some Prof Noctis lore. Um, if you Google a photo of Jesse from the original game, um, she didn't look like this. She didn't look like this. Um, I, I'm not good at Googling and like putting this up here on the, the thing. But uh, the first time I saw her, y'all, the first time I saw her, I, it, I thought that it was a guy with a cowboy hat on, but that was her brown hair. <laughs> So, anyway, <laughs> shock of my life when I realized, oh, Jesse, that, that's her hair. <laughs> I thought it was just some cowboy. <laughs> I thought it was neat. <laughs> Jesse's six polygons were doing their best. Absolutely. If you've not seen her in the original, you've got to go check that out so you can... <laughs> that's when I became a researcher. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's on you. Oh, ow. There we go, baby. The cowboy had his... Yeah, let me tell you, like, I... <laughs> I loved Biggs and Jesse. Um... I thought they were just really, really close. Like some kind of like sweet bromance. It was uh, it was an amazing moment when I realized. Oh, just I just completely misread it. That's <laughs> what happens when you're a middle schooler. Yeehaw! A Mulan moment. <laughs> Jesse, you fooled us. It was Genova. Just some kind of klutzy dude, yeah. Thought Jesse and Biggs were siblings, yeah. I I, I can see that. They've got a real brotherly sort of love. Everybody, I We look in here. Here's like liquid Mako over here. Kinda neat to look at. Again, just like I can't tell you how incredible this looked to me the first time I saw it. Just amazing stuff. Don't go swimming in that tempting as it is. All right, let's see if little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are. That you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! <sighs> Twisted Yarn, that's a great point. <clears throat> Loving um, Barrett to talk about the future he envisions. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm fine. What about the timer? Your call, Merc. Yeah, Esper. Well, it's only one. It's 20 minutes because it's hard mode. So, yeah. I'm not saying Barrett's, Barrett isn't in the wrong. He definitely is. Oh, man. Okay, let's go. This is Sephiroth or Genova. Oh, man. Things are happening. Let's go. Pretty cocky, ain't you? There's not, though. It, it doesn't look like so. I think it's 20 or 30, but in the original, there's much less time. Double crossing. Heads up. What the hell? Hey, how the hell do we fight this thing? It's got real. Ooh, ow. Ready, but the okay. internals can be overloaded. There's no time. Magic. <laughs> no other option, huh? Nice dodge, look at that. Anyway, hey, we need to do a little bit of, um... Gotta heal up. Uh, we will in a minute. Let's go ahead and blast him with this. Let's dance, asshole. Oh. Ooh, that's a good hit, that's a good hit. Back it up, back it up. I sure did. Oh crap. Some praying. Get up, get up. Take the lead. Yes, it's my turn. Yeah, damn it. This thing is tough. It wouldn't <laughs> be much of a weapon if it went down easy. Don't compliment the giant scorpion. <laughs> that didn't work either. Get up. Oh, this is me trying to climb it. Oh my goodness. Oh, get in there. Yeah, we're working on it. Uh, why don't we play some of this game? It is gonna kill us both. Less lip from you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Let's play a game. That's a maximum fury. Oh man, I did the wrong thing. Dang it. Get that weak spot, Cloud. Let's go. Now, hit it hard and fast. Oh, you're in for it now! Just shoot! Keep it together. Yes, it's up on me! No, no! That was pain. Let's get him. Focus and find a way. <sighs> the banter sub, yeah, it absolutely. It is, um. It builds so much into the world, into the lore. Oh my goodness. So what do we do? We gotta get away. Take cover behind that debris. Alright. Oh no, big bad idea. Deal with 
Ba -ba -da -ba. Whoa! Okay, come on. How about some more thunder? Uh, more, more of this is fine. That's fine. Since we are playing on hard mode, why not summon, right? Fat Chocobo, I guess we gotta wait a second, yeah. Clank, clank, clank. Let's get in there, Cloud. Almost. Did summon yet? Nope. That's okay. We're gonna. Ooh, we're running out of magic, though. Bad times. We're halfway there, living on a prayer. Yes, sir. Get ready. Military grade armor and reactor. Woo! Let's not play that game. Uh, Barrett, that's for you. It's on you. Heads up, tail laser. What a summon? Oh, uh, still not yet. There we go. Let's summon now. That chocobo. Let's go, baby. <laughs> it's not slander, she's just loud. Oh gosh, behind the stuff! Oh, get back! Oh my gosh! Go, Chocobo, go! Oh my goodness. Oh, Cloud, oh no. Totally missed that one. I killed Cloud. Oh, he's up for a second. We have raise. Yes, sir, we do. So raising Cloud now. Oh man. You think I care about a few cuts and bruises? Because I don't. Boy, oh boy, we are having a time right now. Come on, Cloud! It's down. Rain hell on it. Ain't gotta tell me twice. We did it! <laughs> it may not have been the the best looking, but we did it! <laughs> Flawless victory. <laughs> not my best hour. Look at this. Shit, the bomb. We gotta go. <laughs> ha! You hear that? Damn thing showed you how it's done. Come on, we've gotta move. <sighs> okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Chad, I'm gonna talk to you when I'm out of danger. An ugly W is still a W. You are correct. First try. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Cloud didn't make it, but you know what? We're we're hanging in there. I think we could climb a little faster, Cloud. Come on, brother. I want these boxes. Yeah, Dustman. Yeah, keep that score. Give me a break. No more Don't they know we are in a hurry? Here we go. Not bad. Oh God! See the marks where the scorpion left. God, that's so cool. That's why we train, in case I'm in a reactor bomb. Yeah, you're right, I could press L3, you're right. Let's go, let's go. Upsy daisy. Do I look okay? Help a girl out, would you? My hero! Hey, we'll link up over there! 
Look after Jesse. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. This room should lead us straight to Barrett. Probably. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait. Boxes. No box left behind, you know what I'm saying? Up, 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 up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Jesse needs more CrossFit. Cloud, we're gonna die! But boxes. You see, boxes. <laughs> we're running out of time. Shut up and climb. You're not helping. Not Sorry, helping. Just, it keeps me focused. I'll freak out if I don't talk. Faster, do Cloud. Anyway? See if you can beat Barrett. Go, go, go. Ah! Oh well mine was higher. Mine was higher. I had to do that workout RX. His little Barrett. eyeballs. I've got you covered. Find us a way out of here. But then. No. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've got Soldier Boy with me. Soldier Boy. X Soldier Boy. X Soldier Boy. Here. Take him down. We don't have time for this shit. The clock is ticking. Cool it. Five seconds. Let's go. The others are waiting. But do you see any boxes, Barrett? Oh boy. Oh! Got me. You got that right. Yep. Sure did. Let's dance, asshole. I freaking love Cloud. I freaking love Cloud. <laughs> You're done. That it? That it? I'm just gonna take on Cloud as my uh, personnel. Oh, a box. Oh, my inventory is full. Is that it? Shedding Dion for Cloud. Yeah. At first, I thought I was going to cosplay as uh, Sid, but people are seeming to want me to cosplay as Cloud. Baby Seal told me that I should consider Cloud because he and I are the same height. In case you didn't know, I am the same height as Cloud Strife, which is 5'8". So if you thought that I was a gigantuan, ta gargantuan tower of a man, sorry about it. But I am a gargantuan cloud of a man, so there's that. And don't come back. And don't come back. This looks like the way out. Noctis is not tall. You know what? Let's get these guys. Just like this. Gotta give it my all. Gotta give it my all. Don't overdo it. Guess, it's my turn. Guess it is. And a boy, Barrett. Oh man, yeah. So that's why you do um, spiky hair, right? To get more height on you. Some people and politicians do like secret heels in their shoes, but real ones just make their hair spikier. Sir. 
Any boxes? Jesse, girl. If I couldn't, believe me, you'd be the first to know. I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. That's good. Yes, sir. God, oh, look at that. What a banger opening to a game, right? Ah, ah, that's just hype. Looks like we made it. Looks like we made it. <laughs> Think you might have overdone it? Yet, yeah, Roxy. I the instructions to the letter. Maybe it triggered a reaction with the Mako? Hmm. Well, let's hope the city's still in one piece. But the planet's what matters, right? <laughs> I mean. This must have helped some. After all that, it had better have. Anyway, let's get going. We in Sector 8? That'd be just down there. All right, then. Lead the way. You got it. Huh. Hmm. Watch out for live wires. They're everywhere. Lady of the Rings, yes, he did. That was part of the contract um, when he left the project. Air in here reeks. But they had to Can't keep to the Nomura the designs. Man, what is that? I've never smelled anything so foul. Hmm. Oh, it's me. Gotta do something about that. And soon. Hello. You're still the one. Oh my guts. They just keep on coming. We need to get out of this place. Was it the Mako density? The primary explosive? The blasting agent? Hey, you can figure that out later. <sighs> I'm running on empty here. Thanks for the follow, you can Snake. Refuel at the base. Next time I'll have to bring a little pick me up. Man, y'all are hopping in tonight, bro. Snake! How much farther do we have to go? Not far. Mr. Freeze, too. We've got all the celebs in here. Snake and Mr. Freeze. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was me being indecisive. That's about as good I did that in real life, any. too. Stand back, then. I'll set the bomb. Can't wait to see you, Marlene. Can't wait to take a hot shower. Good to go. Hmm. Fire in the hole. You sure told those doors. Let that be a Let's lesson to anything that gets in my way. Oh man. So this is the first thing. Attention, all citizens. This is an alert from the Shin 
Kushner Emergency Operations Center. Unidentified intruders have detonated a bomb inside Mako Reactor 1. Multiple explosions have been confirmed, as well as ongoing fires. In response, a disaster warning has been issued in sectors 1 and 8. Structures in the area are at high risk of collapse, rendering the entire sector hazardous. Therefore, all residents of sector 8... No. No way. This couldn't have been us, could it? But what if it was? Hmm. What's done is done. <laughs> Merc's right. It ain't pretty, but we can't stop now. This was just the first reactor, and the planet won't be safe till we get the rest. Yeah, we always knew this was gonna get messy. And this is only the beginning. Y'all gotta look at the bigger picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Though you may not be crying out, I know you're in pain, mm. just like the planet. But it's okay, cause I'm here for you, to help take the load off your shoulders. Your fears, your worries, your concerns, and yes, your fears. Hmm. Whatever your problem, I got you. Huh? Hmm. So, what's our next move, boss? That's easy enough. We get our asses home! Hmm. Hmm. So this is a good, this is as good a time as any to chat about a uh, concept. Here, I want to uh, share something with you really quickly. So, um, there's a theological concept. Um, it, it's rife in things like paganism, but also in um, some uh, elements of um, uh, theologies known as pantheism or panentheism. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about uh, these things. So paganism is, is kind of a large blanket sort of thing. And a lot of times religious groups will utilize the word pagan as things that just don't, they don't agree with. That's not entirely true. Um, paganism is oftentimes, um, though it's referred to as that, it really is a little bit more like... Um, something that's very earthy and natural and controllable. And so um, the reason that it kind of links with like, um, kind of links with some um, uh, panentheism and pantheism talk is in this. Let's check some of this. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll turn it down for you. Yeah, that's good. I got you, fungi. Hey, fungi, uh, lay off the caps a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it just constantly sounds like you're yelling. So <laughs> turn your volume down too. We'll, we'll meet in the middle there. Um, so uh, let's talk a little, little bit about this because I think that this does have some things to do with the game itself. Pantheism is the idea that the earth or the planet or even the cosmos itself is God. Okay. It is like um, the divine. Panentheism is the idea that the divine or God is present within but also exists um beyond that sort of thing so what barrett just said the reason that i talk about this is because what barrett just said really kind of goes into this and this game has some strong what we call panentheistic themes uh kind of like the earth um is um, infused with god right um and so what he said is, I know that you're in pain too. The same kind of pain as the planet. The, pan the planet is crying out in pain and you feel that pain and therefore you feel compelled to do something. Now, what is the right thing that we do? Well, I, I mean, from a personal level, they could like recycle instead of using Mako energy, right? But for the purpose of this game, they're saying that's not big enough. It's not enough when in light of this cause or, um, global crisis that we're in to simply just recycle. We've got to like fight at the source. We got to fight against Shinra itself because they're draining the planet dry and the, the planet's pain is also our pain. Now this goes into a lot of um, religious thought and theology. I think this is so cool, right? 
um, it's this idea of religious thought that um, the people, you and I, uh, since we are, and we talked a little bit about this in the Final Fantasy 16 lecture series, this idea that humanity has the divine image imprinted on them, they are able to feel, to some degree, the emotions of the divine. Um, if you're in the uh, Judeo-Christian uh, tradition, for example, in uh, Christianity, in Romans chapter 8, there is a passage that says, um, indeed, um, all creation groans with eager anticipation for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed. Now think about that for a second. That is, um, that, though it is Christian theology, it's also very panentheistic uh, theology. The idea that there is, um, there's a lot of, of really kind of interesting stuff there, right? That the planet is groaning and those that feel that cry of the planet are compelled to be who they're, they're meant to be and, and to do right by the planet. So that's a really interesting thing that's in Christian literature, panentheistic, pantheistic, and even pagan um, sort of idea. One of the things when we talk about philosophy of religion is religion is constantly trying to make sense of the problem of evil in the world and what is the good. That's a, that's a core question in the theology and philosophy of religion. Final Fantasy VII um, really, really dictates that. Um, we'll talk more about that when we talk about the life stream. Uh, yeah, dude, Central, you're, you're exactly right. The idea of the life stream being the lifeblood of the planet and uh, every person, Cloud's part of it, Barrett's part of it, the party's part of it. Um, but everything that's ever existed, ever will exist, are part of the continual flow of the life stream. That's certainly something that we'll talk a lot more about. Yeah, the Wiccans do have similar beliefs. They're very, very conscious of the spirit energy of the, the planet and uh, in some ways the manipulation of that. Now, that's an interesting side note uh, that, that we'll get into just very, very briefly. Um, one of the things that happens in paganism and the reason why it's called stuff, uh, such is that there's an idea that if you manipulate a portion of the cosmos or a portion of the creation or, or existence, then you're able to manipulate the divine will in some ways. So if God exists on the same plane as humanity on the earth or in the cosmos, if you tweak something in it, then it's going to cause God to do some things. Now, the extreme form of this goes into things like witch doctors and voodoo. So if you get the right cauldron and you toss in like the right hair or gecko or whatever it is, if you get the right recipe, then you can actually manipulate the flow of events in the world. And that's one of the things that, uh, that, that um, in a lot of religious traditions, it's like it's not about, you know, controlling. It's about trusting. I think that's really, really interesting. But with this game, uh, getting back to the game at hand, uh, they are trying to manipulate for the purpose of protection. That's a key theme in this game. How do you manipulate fate? How do you manipul manipulate choices? How do you interact with evil in the world to set things right? And I think that's a, a question that is uh, omnitemporal, right? It's something that is beyond time. So with that, we go back to the game, okay? What do you think about that? Um, to what extent is there free will? Whoo! The question of this game, Racy. <laughs> I have new tongue of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. This makes it so that consideration of just human lives and communities is nowhere near adequate in the ethical frame. Yes, a twisted yarn. That's exactly right. Yeah. Are the Chocobos and the Nebel Wolves going to protest? Who will speak for them? So um, a proper answer is going to take into account all of creation. So I think that's really, really interesting. How do you uh, decide protection? Yeah, the same way uh, you say Shinra should recycle or do something better, be fair, and say the same for avalanche can't be one side. That's exactly right, fungi. That's exactly right. And so their, even their solution is flawed. Um, but what do you do with that? Yeah, so it's good stuff. Who boy, we getting places tonight, baby. We, we doing stuff. That wasn't in the mini lecture. That's just for you, chat. I'll turn you back up a little bit. Oh, Lady of the Rings, I'm so sorry. Hey, I'd like my money now. You can have it once we're back at base. The other thing that this part really makes me think about um, is. And let, let me let me come back up for a second. The other thing that this part makes me really think about chat is um, 
the question of who do you listen to, right? Barrett's talking about listening to the cries of the planet, but especially when you start to like walk through the city as we're going to do, you're going to hear a different narrative um, that this was a terrorist attack, right? And, and while we know the characters, um, they are they they have noble means, but there is collateral damage, even though it is amplified by Shinra, uh, who who set an even bigger bomb, you know. And I think that that's a, a really cool thing to think about here. Who are you listening to? Do you listen to the news that's put out by Shinra? Do you listen to the cries of the planet? Do you listen to your own cries within your, within your own conscience? And how do you do that? How do you do that? Cloud is listening to what is, uh, what's the pay for this, you know? And um, man, good stuff. Okay, let's get back to it. For all the people who are living their lives on Mako, right, right. How many lives has it made better? You know? And, um, it's a question. I don't need to tell you what this is, right? Of course not. Yeah, Lady of the Rings. Oh, oh my gosh. You can have it for saving my life. Just doing my job, nothing more. Yeah, yeah. Fact is. I'm lucky you were there. Survival can be a matter of luck or skill. And you can't rely on luck. Hmm. Words to live by. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. You do know how to use it, right? He's born, was, born ready. Right? Thanks, Jesse. Fungi, let, let me answer that real quick. Um, some of you may not may not know. Um, so I am a uh, professor over at the University of Alabama, uh, and I teach Final Fantasy, particularly Final Fantasy uh, 15. Um, uh, and um, I also just got approved for a Final Fantasy 16 class coming next fall. Um, so yeah, I, I'm. I'm I'm more of an armchair philosopher, though I do know religious philosophy and things having to do with that. So it's gonna, uh, we're gonna dive into things like Kant and Nietzsche and, um, uh, you know, Hegel, Heidegger. Um, but um, certainly Heidegger next week when we talk about that character. But uh, yeah, so that, that explains it. Um, one of my students called me Professor Noctis one time. So uh, yeah, you're in Dothan, brah! Alabama, baby. Mrs. Arcade. Yeah, and you just see the collateral damage. The, the first time that I played through this game, it reminded me, and I'm old enough to, to remember this, by the way. Um, it reminds me of the days after... Um, September 11th, back in 2001, it, it, just some of the scenes of like wreckage and people just not being able to believe it and stuff. Like it is, that is the first thing that I thought of when I saw this, and it, it didn't invoke that same thing in me um, when I played the original. People looking for family members. You just see hey, you're to look. it's just like painful like seeing all of these people so Help me. so Hello, much Bama I'm rep look up. I, said look up. I, I did up here. this could collapse at any moment if you want up you'll have to use those stairs Jesse based on your track record you should not be climbing around up there Thank you, friend. Being on the ground is a totally different experience. <laughs> yeah, here's a better view of it all. Wow. There's things falling. Oh, my God. Yeah, we just want to get a good look at it all.
Jesse, best girl. Hey, Jesse. Jesse's awesome. Like I said, she's come a long way from uh, the uh, cowboy <laughs> that I thought she was in the original. Everybody, I am going to say that for this playthrough, I know I usually don't do this, but for this playthrough, since the original game came out in 1997, we, um, we aren't going to have like a spoiler-free chat. I think that it's important for us to talk about this game um, in context of the old game. So we are going to have a spoiler-filled chat. Y'all, this is one of my favorite games, uh, scenes in the entire game. So if you look around here, obviously they're not necessarily in Midgar anymore. You're seeing buildings that look like a quaint rural town. Um, this is Cloud's hometown. Um, it is... And they're playing a lot with memory and the manipulation of memory here. I see the chat um, asking about, um, is this Sephiroth or is it Genova? It's hard to say. Um, and while we have some answers to that based on Ultimania, is that, that's meant to be ambiguous for us. Some of you don't know what Genova is. We'll, we'll get to that. There he is. The imposing height difference. I appreciate it as a 5'8 man myself. just kind of a visceral storytelling here you feel it like powerful stuff you're not real you're dead i am ah i killed you with my own oh you need not remind me it was the crowning moment of our time together but that was then, and this is now. Mm. I have a favor to ask. Our beloved planet is dying. Slowly. Silently. Painfully. Can you bear to see the planet suffer? Mm. Cloud. So many things will be lost. Your hometown is so bright. The sound of her voice pleading for me to spare you. The shiver of her flesh yielding to cold steel. Mm. That which binds us together would be no more, and I would be loath to live in such a world. 
Which is why I must ask you. Oh my gosh, so favor. good. Don't worry. It's a simple thing. Run, Cloud. Run away. You mm -hmm. have to leave. You have to live. Very good. Hold on to that hatred. Mmm. Just a banger scene. It's so ominous, right? I'm seeing things. Fumes from all the Mako, maybe. Hmm. All right. You got this. You know, it's it's cool um, because he's having this like almost PTSD trauma sort of thing. His hometown burned down. Uh, we know from this scene that Cloud at least has this recollection that he killed Sephiroth. I killed you with my own hands, right? And Sephiroth says, uh, I am. I, I, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, that was then and this is now. And so we know that something is out of um, out of sync here, and I love the way that they're building this mystery as we go through the game. Also, that scene heartbreaking as he is um, crawling toward uh, what is uh, assumedly his uh, his home, uh, his mom's home, right? And um, and it it almost makes it sound like um, that. Cloud that Sephiroth is is saying, uh, this is how your mom died, right? She was begging me to spare you in this. And it's just this sadistic sort of thing that even he just, he knows that she died, but it's just like digging the knife in a little bit deeper. Um, now, again, um, uh, I think Fungi mentioned that this is maybe a manifestation of Genova as Sephiroth. Um, there are, it's confirmed that there are different um, iterations of Sephiroth that appear throughout this game. And I think that's a great way of, of kind of thinking about this and looking at it. So questioning which one is Genova, which one is real, which one, like what is fact and what is fiction as the trailers ask us to, to think about. Yeah, uh, Nathan, absolutely right. I really am looking forward to seeing how his body language evolves too. I, I mean, just beautiful stuff. Run, Cloud, run away. And you have to leave, you have to live is what Cloud's mom told him before she died. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, ah, oh, man, that's good. And we're going to get that story at the beginning of this next, um, this next thing in the sequel. I, I can't wait for it, you guys. And so it hits us with a, a bit of a somber tone here. Look at the uh, graffiti on the wall. Just powerful music, too. It's great. You all right? You should get away from there. Mm. The expressway was damaged, too? This is the first time I'm playing this with headphones in, and I am hearing, like, the sirens and the, um, the cars screeching and stuff in the background. It's just maddening, like, wild stuff. Are there any boxes? From Advent Children, oh boy. Man, what a mess. Hey Jeffrey, thank you. Also thank you for the sub earlier. Cycle of Souls. This song is definitely going in my next video, by the way. I can't wait to drop that one in a few weeks on you. It's going to be so good.
Hmm. How do they expect us to evacuate? The mayor can kiss his job goodbye. Loveless Street. Loveless is a play. Um, oh, don't, don't go that way. They better catch the bastards who did and we're going to finally get to see the play in um, Seven Rebirth, at least according to the trailers. It's cool to kind of see life up here, right? I mean, it looks pretty normal. You've got hot dogs and hamburgers for three ninety nine. That's like Ikea over here. Um, we've got andouille sausages. Pizza. This, it's just kind of a neat place. Bar Cosmo. Welcome. Exact timeline, baby. Hmm. Vladimir, good point. Scaring those things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just hmm. my luck. I heard that, you know. Chat, what should I say? How much or I'm good? Ah, uh, this song is so pretty. Take the flower. How much or I'm good? Oh, we want to say how much. Okay. <laughs> Racy getting fiery about this. Conjugate, that's a great point. What Aerith can and cannot see throughout this game is a very interesting topic. Um, yeah, it's good. How much? Well, that depends on the customer. That's right. I do have the music box. In your yeah. case, <laughs> it's on the house. Mm. Lovers used to give these. When they were reunited. Hmm. <sighs> Look, I'm involved in things. Dangerous things. Oh, I'm sure you are. So? So keep your distance. Wait, you think someone's out to get you? Is that what you're all worked up about? Relax. No one's going to attack you. I promise. Hey, a Mako reactor just blew. You shouldn't be out here trying to sell. <laughs> Help me. Now he's able to see the whispers. If you saw my um, video earlier, we're going to talk about the whispers in a little bit. Ah, oh, man. Sword on the ground, right now. Oh, that musical transition, baby. We love it. Was never in doubt. And the way that it kind of tones down when you're not in battle and then it ramps back up. Oh, man, it's good.
Oh, we'll get that in a moment. Come on. What are we doing? Oh, there we go. Tell it too much. Oh, no, you don't. Get off of me. Get off of me. Let's finish this. Oh, wrong way again. Still the wrong way. There we go. Let's just go back this way. We just definitely just went the complete wrong way. Nothing to it. Whoa, thanks for the sub, Dustman. Oh, that freaking dog. Always gotta be dogs, don't it? The way he handles the sword is just so cool. Oh, I love it. Oh, turn around, bro. Turn around, bro. Out of that. Ooh, ooh, I hate it. If I cosplay as Cloud, I gotta get that Buster Sword, right? Guys, let's spell it out. I think conjugate. He needs to be bigger than me, like the like the Dion spear over here in the corner. <laughs> Y'all are turning me into like a cosplayer, you guys. Who taught him how to use that sword, Dust Man? Go, baby, go. I'm having a good time with it. My Dion cosplay was really fun. I can't wait. I'm going to go to a convention. Oh my gosh. Oh man, they are on me. It is all or nothing. The first boxes. the uh, sound is doing that again, you guys. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on. I'm going to try to turn it down a little bit, see if that helps. Not bad. Let's just try a few things. Sorry about that. I'll get it fixed by next time. Okay. 
Eventually, I will have a whole arsenal of weapons, Dustman. Yeah. Man, it's when it gets really, like, noisy. Racy, you subbed! No more ads. Okay, sorry. I was working on the uh, sound a little bit. Oh, stop it. Okay, bump that. We're doing limit breaks. Nothing personal. Mm. This will hurt. Okay, I'm sorry guys. I don't know what's going on with that sound there. Whoa, do not flee. I don't want to flee. Okay, we're going to do this again. This is fun. Sound is way too hyped, apparently. Yeah. Let me try this real quick. Okay, we'll see if that helps a little bit. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. The game just got nervous. Okay, yeah. I think it's something with my microphone. I don't know what's going on. Oh my gosh. But if I die, you know it's because of that. It's definitely not a, uh, a problem of skill, because you've seen me. <laughs> you know, real ones know. I truly love this uh, battle system. Like, if Final Fantasy wants to commit to a battle system, I would highly recommend they do this one. It's so good. I always die because of chat or sound problems. It's never because of skill, right? That's what we're going to keep telling ourselves. No matter what the whispers tell us. Okay, freaking dogs, man. Let's get them. Or let's just limit break them. Because we keep on doing this. Audio skill diff. That's right. Everybody notice how they evaporate into the live stream? I think that's a really cool touch. It's really neat. Uh, am I going? Yeah, there we go. Oh, boxes. You know I love boxes. When yours truly was a little boy, um, somebody gave me a gift that was in a large cardboard box. I think I was about four years old, but my family to this day, every Christmas, says, do you remember when Little Wade used to, uh, uh, would get a box and he would open it up and he would say, oh my God, mom, it's a brand new box. That's a little personal prop Noctis lore. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy this. He still got that flower though, baby. Still got that flower. These bullies, they're after me because of my flower, because I look good. In my sleeveless turtleneck. Time to, get serious. Time to get real serious. God, this song just goes. Yeah, he does, voices. Yeah, he does. I'm Dustman's cat, confirmed. Oh, man. Turn around, Cloud. Dodge! Cloud! Oh, jerk. Limit break it is. I've got a great accessory that constantly recharges the uh, limit break. It's a little broken, but I love it. Just jam the flower onto his chest. <laughs> Wait, I know that. Thing. 
Oh, man! Epic. I know that sword. Aww. Lady of the Rings, I love that. There's our little terrorist. Kiss Cloud won't be joining us after all. No need to assume the worst. I'm sure he's fine. You saw him in action, didn't you? Guy's a soldier. Goddamn one man army. Hmm. You think he's a keeper? What do you think, Barrett? He's so agile with that sword. Uh -huh. uh, what the hell you been up to, huh? <laughs> Giving public security the run around. That's what. That's what. Had to draw them away from the station somehow. Nicely done. Well, can't argue with results, huh? <clears throat> what? <sighs> Got a question for you all. What? Ever been attacked by an invisible enemy? Uh, what? Wearing robes. Came and went like the wind. Hmm. <laughs> Thought they were invisible. They were, at first. Only saw them after she grabbed me. A new Shinra weapon, maybe? <laughs> More like a panic induced hallucination. <clears throat> Never mind. Forget I said anything. Hmm. Suit yourself. Come on, let's move up. A lot of people here. And in the freight car, too. Because of the evacuation order, maybe? Lucky this us. We've got a crowd to hide here. Head for the front of the train and hold this. Due to an explosion at Mako Reactor 1, an emergency schedule is now in effect. Again, he's so mobile with that sword. I would clank into everything. Worse than Jill. The highway collapse right in front of me. Wow, who would think there'd be people riding the freight car? Guess they don't have to stop them right so now. Sorry, I'm just going to stand from Hey, got a sec? Uh, for you, Charlie Sheen, anything. Just leave me alone, all right? In fact, I've been holding this flower for you. Holding up pretty well, huh? Even after what we saw at the station hit, and all over Sector 8? I'm a soldier. Wow. My hands are still shaking. You get used to it. Why don't you Something learn to, to look hit, forward buddy? to. Or this bad. girl's got to chill. <laughs> Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Sorry, I'm just talking to my best bro. Just called in sick. Did Mr. Shinra catch the bad men yet? You want to talk? I can't stop thinking about it. Too. The bomb I made no, shouldn't have produced an explosion that, that big. Hmm. It doesn't make any sense. The explosion triggered a reaction with the Mako. You said so yourself. That was my first guess, but shouldn't the reactor have fail-safes to prevent that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. You mentioned invisible enemies back there, right? Right. Oh, no. I'm just looking for excuses for You think Cisne will be in fault. Rebirth? I think she'd be great in it. I'll own up to it if I'm gonna learn from this and move on. Thanks, Cloud. You're a good listener. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Kyrie's in this train. This will be the last attack on a reactor. Hang on, is she in this train? I missed that. Okay, look, chill, lady. Is she the one that's telling me to learn to take a hint, buddy? Yes, she is. Take a hint, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah, she is. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? She is the absolute one. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Kyrie, um... My daughter now lives in Sector 8, so... Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Yeah, she's right over there, everybody. If you didn't see her. I mean, she's made herself very, very known. Why don't you learn to take <laughs> a hint, buddy? Where are you? There, Cloud, move your stupid head. Okay, <laughs> there you why don't you learn to take a hint, Kyrie? Oh, man. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? 
<laughs> she said that like a billion times to me. What kind of maniacs would go so far as to bomb a reactor? Ah, uh, Shinra simps over here. They've yet to announce it publicly, but I heard it was Avalanche's doing. Really? Aren't they the terrorists who tried to kill the president? Is there nothing they won't do? Hey, quit talking out your ass. <laughs> Everyone knows Avalanche only cares about saving the planet. <clears throat> just, just who do you think you are? A law-abiding concerned citizen. Mm -hmm. Law-abiding? Really? <laughs> Barrett jump scare. <laughs> you, that explosion <laughs> yep. was a message. A message to the bastards bleeding our planet dry. Rich to live by. Think they got it? Heard it loud and clear? Y'all's masters? <laughs> we will not submit to intimidation or violence, but work together for peace and prosperity. Uh. That is how civilized people change the world. That's right. <laughs> that is the Shinra Creed. That is the Shinra Creed. Oh. Them's fighting words. Them's fighting words. It's what we believe. We all have to follow our conscience, don't we? <laughs> we should go. Right. Oh. I love it. I mean, that's that's just company. Uh, professional development day. It's like, yeah, Shinra Creed. That's what we live by. <laughs> Listen, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Hoven, you just said it. You just said this game is goofy, but this guy. I gotta get away from him. <laughs> He's gonna keep on saying that. The reason I love this game is because it it um it really conserves and preserves that. Uh, basic goofiness that's in the old Final Fantasies. It does it so well. It does it so well. I love 15 and I love 16. They lack some of the goofiness of um, of, of this. And uh, I love this. I, I, I think we're going to see even, even more goofiness in, uh, in, um, in Rebirth. Yeah. I didn't hear anything. You gotta believe me. This train is moving slow as molasses. Okay, I Focus on Barrett. There we go. Oh, a little close. Oh, this guy needed a nap. Oh, he's working the late shift. Oh, man. Hats off to you. They have no idea about the bad stuff. It's all about that propaganda. That's right. That's right. And that's why I asked that question. Who do we listen to? Uh, who are the uh, voices that we choose to listen to? Uh, to the companies, to the media, even to a degree. I, I, chat, let me, let me tell you something. Um, so let me talk to you. <laughs> let me talk to you. Um, when uh, in, in my classes, and uh, when I when I'm I also work at Religious Life in Religious Life at the University of Alabama. What I tell my students, whether they are in the classroom or they are in um, in uh, uh, different religious settings, what I always tell them is ask the hard questions of those that are speaking. Ask the hard questions, asking what what's in it for them to say this, um, because people in authority. It, it, we want people in authority, especially in religious, religious authority, political authority, all that kind of stuff. We want to be able to trust them and say they have our best interests in, at heart, right? But a lot of times that's not the case. And so we do have to ask the question, why would they say this? What is the, the backside of that? Uh, thank you for the follow, Data Wizard. I think that that's a really great question. We ask the question, why are they wanting us to, or why would Shinra tell this creed to their employees? Because do they know what they're doing? They're trying to cover it up. Um, what do we say to ourselves in order to justify the things that we do that may be a little less than ethical, right? Um, bombing a reactor, for instance. Uh, that's an extreme case, uh, of course. So, yeah. Okay. Just wanted to say that. Um, I, I love to ask my students to, oh, twisted yarn. Yeah, that's exactly the word to take accountability, to take responsibility for the things that you allow to inform you of, um, uh, about life, about all, all that kind of stuff. Ask the tough questions. 
So there you go. <sighs> That's more of a Prof Noctis mini rant, not a Prof Noctis mini lecture, right? That's how I'm getting old and curmudgeon -y. You whippersnappers. <laughs> okay, let's go. <sighs> ah, just always ask the tough questions, right? Let's do it, Jesse. Personally, I find visual aids make the dull stuff a lot more bearable. Mm. If it helps, think of it as an initiation rite. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm not. There's such a thing as playing too hard to get. <laughs> so, Jesse. Wireframe model. I love her so much. Of Midgar, complete with massive steel plates suspended 300 meters above ground level. Atop which stands a shining beacon of civilization. The whole system is sustained by the Mako reactors, which feed the insatiable appetites of the public. The train will be passing through an IV checkpoint shortly. Mm. This here is the train's route. As you can see, it'll take us around this main pillar. Conjugate, yeah. We're about Erica through it kills now. it. They've set up a checkpoint here to scan the IDs of all passengers heading in and out. Date of birth, residential status, criminal mm. history, all that and more is automatically cross-referenced in their databases. Public security wouldn't have it any other way. Heads up. <sighs> Don't worry. Our IDs are impeccable. What'd I tell you? Have a little faith. Won't be long till we reach the bottom. Relax. Take a good look. It's because of that great big pizza in the sky that people down there got to struggle to survive. Shinra sucks up Mako while the soil turns to dust. The air fills with smog and the flowers die. Then leave and don't look back. <sighs> hey, let me stop right there. That's a great line. Uh, so Barrett is, is in the same way that Shinra employees are spouting off their creed, Barrett is recycling and re, uh, reiterating things that he's heard, that he's been told his whole life or uh, for the last several years and stuff. So, I, I mean, that that's such a big thing, you know, when, when it comes to um, especially growing up, you know, what are the voices, what are the things that we trust and how do we um, how do we continue to replay those things to inform the perspective and the lens of our world? That's why in my video earlier, um, I talk about how when we're talking about these concepts, we're talking about lenses through which to see things. Everybody's got lenses. And when we realize that we have lenses through which we see the world, that helps us to gain more perspective of, oh, oh I have this lens. This person over here is going to have another lens. And we all look through lenses. And the the path to some level of enlightenment, I think, is when we're able to say, okay, let me let me take off my lens for a moment and put your lens on so that I can see the world as you see it. I may give you back the lenses or I may take them for myself, right? I think that this is a really, really um, important lesson that we're hearing, but it's important to know that Barrett is just as dogmatic as the Shinra employees, the Shinra employees. That's a key, key, key thing. Everybody in this world um, has some level of dogma to them. We're going to certainly get into that a lot more. Um, yeah, let, let me check in on the chat a little bit. Um, fun guy. Yeah, you're, you're going deep into, uh, some of the, the stuff with, um, that's going to be happening in rebirth. And I've, I've got some, some stuff cooking, uh, on that one. Let me tell you, but, um, with, with Don and some of Barrett's own, uh, backstory and history. Um, spend our whole lives developing those biases in which we view the world. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, High Wind, yeah, I, this is a great point. Barrett's spouting out everything that he's reading in planetology books. That's a, that's a key point here, too. And um, what, I, what I tell my students um, oftentimes is that, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily the mark of a, a, an intelligent or a good person to um, be able to answer questions. But instead, it's the mark of an intelligent person to know where to go for answers, right? It's important to go uh, to, to know where you're going to look for answers. And that's the purpose of education and academia, to expand people's horizons so that what was previously foreign to them has not only become accessible to them, but it's become familiar. Um, we become world-class kind of people. Chat, let me, let me zoom in because this is this is... This is pretty good. Um, 
we become world-class people when we allow what was once foreign to us to become familiar. We innately have a fear of that which is unfamiliar to us. But when we become so familiar with the foreign that we can somehow integrate it or piecemeal it into our lives, then we are able to engage with people whose lenses don't necessarily match ours. It's not that you're a dynamic, charismatic, personality-driven, um, world-class person, but being a world-class person means that you have some level of, of um, understanding of where someone's coming from, even if you don't necessarily go with that. Um, uh, this is how I try to interact with people on Twitter. Um, I try to ask questions rather than, you know, like dig in my heels. Um, and especially when it comes to Final Fantasy VII, this is about, um, this This is all about theories at this point. Um, my theory, my lens is no greater or worse than yours, um, but it may be better founded or yours may be better founded. And that's an important thing where we can have some fun discussions. And I, I that's what I love. So anyway, uh, man, well, let's get back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. That's what's always worked for me. <sighs> Leave and don't come back. Well yeah. Good. Don't look if back. You only out for yourself. Mm. But the folks down there don't have the luxury of choice, you know. You, you can't do that when you don't have the luxury of choice. Man, I love that. I love that. Um, I teach a class where we deep dive into. Um, like this train. I talk about uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs in one of my classes. And while there's a lot of critiques of that, people do things based on their lenses and their needs. It's important. Closer to a brighter future. Hell yeah! Guys, <laughs> lower your voices, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrorists shouldn't be like high fiving after they get off the train. <laughs> get some R and R. You've earned it. Just be ready for the next mission, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! See you soon. Uh, at seventh heaven. You know where Tifa works. Don't keep her waiting. To worry. Is Yuri Lowenthal um, the the train guy? Huh. All right, everybody. I said that we would end at the end of chapter two, uh, so we are going to end in chapter two. Um, I, I know that this is the start of chapter three. We're gonna just kind of chill. Because we've done some good work tonight, everybody. Um, I, we're gonna we're gonna stop right here, uh, but we are gonna look up at the sky first. Um, everybody, looking up, looking up here. Um, the last thing that we said um, was that Barrett was saying that's easy to say when you've got choice, but we don't have any choice, and uh, it's like it's really amazing. Um, when you look up, if you aren't familiar with the Final Fantasy VII world, um, these are the slums, and they take place underneath, underneath uh, this plate and underneath this uh, spiral here. And uh, you know, th this is a this is a class system. You know, when we're talking about the hierarchy of needs and stuff, these are people that are um, in a very different kind of need mode. So. I don't want to get too much into that because that is going to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs is going to be the key to our next two chapters that we're doing on Thursday. Okay, so with that, let me uh, let me give you some closing thoughts as we go. Everybody, this has been so fun. It's been such a fun stream. You guys always make it great. You come in with your amazing ideas. Uh, Chad has been popping tonight. Thank you so much for hopping in, everybody. Um, this has been. Um, this has been 
really, really fun. Um, so uh, here's, what, here's what I want you to do. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, you've got two pieces of homework, okay? <laughs> Uh, number one, if you're not familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, if you're not in my Discord, hop in the Discord. I'm going to put some resources about um, Maslow, um, and we're going to definitely dissect that in the next stream. But um, we're also going uh, to talk a little bit more about the uh, uh, about the uh, video that I posted earlier today. So definitely get. Um, get, if you haven't watched the video that I posted about what's, uh, what's up with the whispers or what makes the whispers make sense, go and watch that. Now, please note, it is spoiler filled from the original game, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake to the very end of it and Crisis Core Reunion. So if you want to somewhat stay unspoiled from that, then just FYI, uh, just letting you know, um, so uh, head on over to YouTube, do all that. I do hope that you'll uh, hop in my Discord. We have some great conversations, but Maslow's Hierarchy and the Whispers video. Nostalgia Verse, thank you so much for hopping in. Everybody, you guys have been awesome tonight. This has been so much fun. Thursday night, we are going to be... Um, whoa, Needle Mouse, thank you for the sub. Um, we are going to be back in action Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so look forward to being with you. Um, this has been awesome. This has been awesome. Love you guys. Um, just man, y'all, y'all have made my day. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you on Thursday. Good night. Take care.